as far as any updates from the briefing from this morning, we've added some additional partners that are coming to assist with the investigation, including the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. They're helping us out. Um, the Comanche Nation is coming to help, as well as Fort Sill is providing some soldiers for the search operations that OHP is running with their ERTs. Um, we've been out all day uh, conducting those grid searches with volunteers, and we really appreciate their support along with OHP support in managing that effort. We are collecting items that could be relevant. Um, I'm not going to call them evidence, but we are um, finding things around town that, that could be helpful in this case. Um, one of the questions from this morning was about the health and condition of the five-year-old that was found yesterday. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We can report that she did not require medical care at the time. Of course, she was frightened. Um, that goes without saying when you're a five-year-old. Um, she's currently in protective custody with the state, but she did not require any sort of medical care at the time. Um, we really appreciate all the tips that have been called in to our tip line. Uh, we encourage anybody in town, whether you're a business owner or a resident, that if you have any sort of video cameras or ring doorbell systems, um, if you can uh, come down to the church and provide that to law enforcement, it will be very beneficial. Um, let's see. We're still working on putting together the exact timeline, but again, I can confirm that um, this investigation really kicked off yesterday about 2 p.m. when the postal carrier located the five-year-old um, and contacted the police department. Um, and then we got involved later that night. And then, of course, all of our law enforcement partners have joined us and we've been looking for her nonstop since uh, the original call came into the police department. Um, with that, I'm going to let Trooper Foster answer some questions about OHP resources that are out here and also address the Amber Alert. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol was requested last night, and and obviously we're we're here to assist. And so we brought all of the resources that are available uh, to be able to come and, and assist. We've we've been in the air with helicopter with infrared. Uh, we've been on the ground. Obviously, you've seen around town. Uh, there are a lot of uh, grid searches on foot going around, and and on four wheelers, things like that. Um, and so our ERT team, which is a team specially trained to go on foot in search of, of people and things, are out in coordination with civilians who have come and, and wanted to volunteer their time and effort. And that, that's, really, that's really a great thing to see, especially in Oklahoma. We see that uh, all the time. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol also is utilizing boats on some of these small ponds out here to make sure that we check waterways and check those thoroughly to make sure all of that is, is done appropriately with uh, sonar and things like that we can see in the water. Um, and so uh, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol is very much involved in just assisting whatever needs to be done uh, that is requested uh, from uh, OSBI and the city of Surreal. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone involved. Uh, and really, uh, you know, I reach out and say, pray for all of those involved, not just on the law enforcement side, but there are a lot of people, there are a lot of civilians, there are a lot of uh, resources being put into this um, that, you know, that this is done appropriately. To answer the uh, Amber Alert question, there have been a lot of questions on the Amber Alert. The Amber Alert has specific guidelines that we have to adhere to to push out the Amber Alert specifically. The Amber Alert goes out nationwide. So once we push that button, it goes all the way to Washington, D.C. and goes out like that. So there are specific uh, things and guidelines that we have to follow. Not every part of that guideline came into play in this. And so that wasn't done. So the next best thing that we could do was a missing and endangered uh, notification. That went out in a 15-mile radius in around where we knew uh, that the person was missing. Um, and so um, that's why you didn't get it statewide. Those emergency alerts didn't go statewide. It went locally, and that was really the important time frame that we needed to get that out. Um, and so, and it was pushed on social media. All of the news outlets were able to get that immediately. Um, and so it was, it was done in a, a very efficient way by guidelines. Uh, and there are reasons for those guidelines. The, the Department of Justice puts out those guidelines to help us uh, kind of uh, put that together. Um, and so that's kind of the answer on that. Um, Brooke? 
Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, conclude with a couple of things. Um, there's a lot of talk about this investigation on social media. Um, obviously, we can't stop that, but um, it can be counterproductive to the investigation. So I would encourage people not to report or spread uh, rumors or innuendos that they see on social media. And lastly, I think on behalf of all of us here and involved, all of the volunteers, we would like to thank the community. Um, if you haven't been inside, there's just been an outpouring of food and water for the for the law enforcement and the searchers here and the volunteers that are giving their time and energy to finding her. Um, the restaurants, the churches, the volunteers here, we really appreciate them and obviously um, couldn't um, continue this investigation without their help. We'll take a few questions. Um, I'm just gonna be honest, guys. That's pretty much what we know at this point in time. Uh, so I don't know how many questions we'll be able to answer, but certainly you can try. How old is Athena? We've seen three and we've seen four. We can confirm she's four. Originally we thought she was three, but she is four. Thank you. Where are the parents right now? Uh, that's part of the ongoing um, investigation. I'm the maternal grandmother. Okay. My son's informed dealing with what he needs to deal with. Okay. I have another question. Yeah. So when was she last seen? We've seen Sunday, we've seen Friday. When was the last time she was seen? Well, as I mentioned, we're still building that timeline and we're working and talking to witnesses and neighbors and uh, people in town to build out that timeline. What I can confirm to you that is not rumor or innuendo is that this investigation began at two o'clock yesterday when her five-year-old sister was located by the postal carrier. That's when we found out. Uh, I have a question. Has, has today's uh, search drive progress? I know there's been some people saying they may have picked up the sense of the railroad tracks, anything like that? Um, nothing at this point that I can confirm. We're still very actively looking for her using all of our tools, thanks to OHP and our other law enforcement partners. Um, like I did say, we are finding things that we hope might give us clues as to where she is we're still actively looking for her is there a chance that this investigation will spread outside of this area outside of the just the city in general at this point in time um we're we're here we're staying in town we're looking in town and we'll see what happens with um as the investigation progresses does temperature or terrain pose any kind of concern right now well you're talking about a toddler who's been on her own um so i would say yes can you give a description of her and what she might have been wearing? Um, description is difficult. I believe we were last told she was reporting uh, or wearing a butterfly hoodie. Um, she's blonde and she's four. Her picture's on social media. I can confirm that's her if you want to share that. Um, but that's what we've got so far. What will this search effort look like going forward to the um, that's an excellent question. Uh, it's obviously going to be ongoing. We're going to be here until um, it I need to clarify that Athena Brownfield is actually four years old. The first uh, news clip I saw this morning, they were saying she was three. So um, that caused me to put out some wrong information. So if you're uh, following her case, just know that she's four years old and not three.